Um, welcome back from that brief uh, commercial break. As we went for that break, um, we are still trying to handle uh, the core of the question, which is philanthropic factors as far as colonization of Africa was concerned. And uh, I was trying to inform you that we can also incorporate this issue of, of uh, prestigious factors and, uh, and uh, a philanthropic or humanitarian or social factors, okay? By the way, we can also talk about the issue of the racial superiority complex theory. Okay? Racial superiority complex theory. Of course, this was a, 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 an ideology that was put forward by a man known as Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin. Uh, Charles Darwin argued that by nature, Europeans were more superior compared to the Africans. And of course, because Europeans were more superior compared to the Africans, it was the responsibility of the superior um, Europeans uh, to administer and govern or rule over the inferior, the inferior Africans, okay? So coming to Africa or taking over the Africans was just part of fulfillment, okay, of that uh, hypothesis, okay, or theory that had been put forward by Charles Darwin, okay? Uh, and of course, quite a number of issues were put forward to substantiate more on this uh, theory. But of course, all that was trying to justify why uh, Europeans were supposed to be treated in a special way. And of course, because they were a special race, okay, they were actually supposed to govern over the inferior race who are the Africans, okay? And therefore, taking over and colonizing the Africans was just part of what they had been um what they had what they were supposed to do okay now that is the core of the question i cannot say that probably maybe i've exhausted but i can say that i've given you more than three quarters of what the core is supposed to look like now when we go to the however side okay of course don't forget that in the introduction we said that the colonization of africa was as a result of a number or a complexity of factors, okay, which we highlighted in the introduction. You remember when we said that these factors were political, others were economic, and others were, were strategic or even otherwise, okay? And we started with our core. By the way, it is an abomination in history to always try to change the flow of the question. Never try to change the flow of the question, more so as far as African history is concerned. Kindly begin by supporting the statement, irrespective of the nature of the stand that you're going to take, whether it is to a smaller extent or the reverse. Always ensure that you begin with the core of the question. It is always um, a tendency of some students, more so learners, who seem not to be prepared for what is being examined to begin with what they know, okay, on the waiver side. And of course they can do it like this. They can say that it was to a smaller extent that philanthropic factors led to the colonization of Africa. However, other factors contributed greatly as explained below. And at the end of the day, the student will begin with the other factors or what is supposed to be part B of the presentation and now he or she is making it as a core and then eventually brings in philanthropism or philanthropic factors on the other side. That is wrong. That will um, kill the impression and of course that will make you to get um, marks that are not going to help you to earn a distinction because remember whatever you're going to do make sure that you're aiming at a distinction in order to get an a and of course the essence of this program is to help you to ensure that you move away from the borderline you move away 
from the satisfactory bracket, you move away um, from the fairly good, from the very good, from the good to the excellent um, uh, marks, okay? So please desist from that. Now, on the waiver side, of course, the factors are so many. The order of presentation of those factors may not matter, okay? And you categorically repeat, it is non-satanic and indeed it's not boring for you to write a transitional paragraph. By the way, whenever you are switching from one side of the essay to another, make sure that you use words such as, however, however, you can also say, in spite of the fact that, in spite of, Despite the fact that, despite the fact, despite the fact, okay, much as, okay, although, okay, all these words can be used in a transitional paragraph, okay, to switch from one part of the question to the other. So I'm saying, keep on reminding the examiner or the person going to mark your essay that much as you've presented enough, as far as philanthropism is concerned, there are quite a number of other factors that also contributed to the colonization of Africa. And these factors can be classified under political. These factors can be economic or commercial considerations, these factors can be strategic or otherwise. And now, when you are presenting these factors, feel free to tabulate them. And indeed, if you followed the discussion that we had last Saturday, uh, these factors included, of course, political, political factors, political factors, which we can summarily record here as Franco Prussian War, Franco Prussian War, Franco Prussian War of 1870 to 71. We can make a mention of unification of European powers. Remember, I'm just trying to remind you of what we discussed earlier on unification of European powers of the European powers, and of course the powers in question here were Italy and German. We can talk about rise of nationalism among the Europeans, okay? We can talk about imperialism, which sometimes was also regarded as jingoism. Jingoism, okay? We can talk about issues uh, such as the Berlin Congress. Of 1878. Of course, not forgetting the Berlin Conference of 1884 to 85. Okay? We can also include... Leopold's activities, now I'm bringing it under political factors, Leopold's activities in Congo, Leopold's activities in Congo. We can also talk about the Egyptian question as a political factor, Egyptian question of 1882, we can also talk about the Niger Delta crisis, Niger Delta crisis, okay? It doesn't mean that you're supposed to present all these factors. Remember, this is just a classification of a single factor which are political. 
and make sure that when you come to the river side, you are balancing. And how many political factors have we managed to come up with? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? Mm. Eight factors, okay? Eight factors. They are quite a number. They are many, okay? Uh -huh. So those are your political factors. Hope you are following. Now, we can also say that other factors were economic. Don't forget, we said we can say economic or commercial or Hobson's views. We need to know all those classifications. Hobson's views. And of course here, don't forget the effects of the Industrial Revolution. Effects of the Industrial Revolution. And how many do we have here? We talked about unemployment. We have dumping. We have need to reinvest. reinvest. The surplus capital. I'm not explaining these aspects because I presented the details in the last encounter. Need to invest the surplus capital. We can also talk about uh, population explosion. I'm bringing back, back population explosion, but of course here. I'll explain it in economic terms. I'll try to relate population explosion with scarcity of land as a resource. Okay. Then we'll talk about need for raw materials. Then we'll talk about need for market. Okay. Need for market. Of course, that one came about because of excessive, excessive production. Okay need for market uh-huh now are the economic factors included the discover of minerals discover of minerals okay of course, diamond and gold at Whitwater's Run and at Kimball and Whitwater's Run, respectively. And of course, later on, copper in Katanga region. Then we'll talk about um, the role of chartered companies. And of course, economic depression eighteen seventy two to seventy nine. So those are the economic or commercial considerations, also known as Hobson's views. Okay. Then we'll talk about other factors. Others like Public opinion, public opinion, role of the press, to include um, radio stations, to include newspapers, to include magazines, eh? in line with the information, okay, that they were... Uh, passing on to the people okay as far as colonization was concerned okay role of the press then we can talk about exploration factor exploration factor we can also talk about the role of men on sport men Men on sports, okay. Of course, these included uh, hunters, geographers, okay. 
explorers okay and so on and so on and so forth okay then don't forget our strategic factors remember i told you anything to be regarded as strategic should have value attached for example i know uh, for those who are viewing us you are comfortably seated in your sitting room and you've chosen a particular area so so that you can capture you can be in position to view what is being passed on to you without any disturbance. So where you are becomes a strategic place and what you are benefiting from that place uh, um, becomes the strategic factor, okay? So anything strategic should have value attached, okay? So you can try to identify some of the strategic areas and I told you to complete the sequence it is as simple as identifying the area, okay? Then, how important it was, okay? And of course, the importance of that area should rhyme with the advantage or advantages that area provided or the, 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 the strategic aspect implication of that area and then the beneficiary the beneficiary or if you want the respective european power okay the re respective european power now you can realize that you cannot <clears throat> be in position to write all of those factors because don't forget that you're supposed to attempt each and every question eh, in only 45 minutes. And assuming you're going to present whatever information that I've passed on to you, you may end up writing um, <clears throat> one question in one hour's time or even plus. Okay? And now that means that you'll be cheating on the other questions, the time for the other questions. So make sure that you always have a timer and you time yourself. Otherwise, the art of summary here will come in, most on the however side, okay? You may highlight a few factors and then other factors, you present them as a bulge, okay? You present them in a group form. For example, you can say under political, you're presenting franco prussian war unification of European powers such as German and Italy, the Berlin Conference and Berlin Congress, and then other factors that you've not, uh, that you're not going to explain in detail. You create a paragraph, but you present them in that single paragraph, and you'll be using a comma, okay, to separate one factor from the other. But don't go in depth. Otherwise, if you want to explain each and everything, you don't use 45 minutes. The same applies to economic factors, okay? Identify a few effects of the Industrial Revolution and the rest of the effects. Present them in one paragraph, okay? And so on and so forth, okay? This applies to only when a given factor is not the core, okay? But if the factor is the core, as we have the case of the philanthropic, kindly and kindly make sure that you present the core of that question exhaustively. Okay? You present the core of the question exhaustively. Failure to handle the core of the question exhaustively will leave some gaps. Okay? And of course that will affect your scores. For example, assuming on the core of, the, of this question, which is philanthropic, you present two factors and then you rush. Okay? And you go to the other side and you present, even if there are 30 factors, but when you've presented only two factors, on the philanthropic side, on the core of the question, my dear, you'll be affecting your scores because the, the impression will not be good, okay? The impression will not be good. So, at the end of the day, you make sure that you come up with a logical conclusion. Remember I said it is a two-sided question. So when you are concluding, 
make sure that the conclusion is logical, okay? The conclusion should be logical, okay? And with this, you should also ensure that as you're concluding, okay, as you're concluding, remember I said the conclusion is a personal judgment. A personal judgment of one's work. And because it is personal, okay, we cannot have the same conclusions, okay? But now remember, you are concluding by trying to incorporate uh, the two parts of the question, because we say the question is two-sided, and you make it look one, okay? Now, the issue of English still comes in here, okay? Kindly, when you're concluding, avoid using words like, however, you cannot begin your conclusive paragraph by using the word, however. Whenever you use however, it simply means that you are not about to sum up. In fact, you are adding on to something, okay? So you cannot use however, okay? You cannot also use the word, even though... Even though, even though, okay, you can't use such words, okay? There are some known words that you can use to conclude your essay, okay? Words like, in conclusion, okay? Words like, in summary, Words like conclusively, words like considering the foregoing, Okay. Considering the foregoing, okay, words like in a nutshell, you know you always want to use such words and one wonders what is there, okay? In a nutshell, okay, and so on and so forth. All through your presentation, ladies and gentlemen, Make it a must that try as much as possible not to develop feelings in your presentation. Try as much as possible not to personalize your work much as you are the author of the work that you're presenting and we are aware you are the author. So I don't expect you to use words like, uh, as I conclude, okay, so we are going for a commercial break and we'll be back in a moment. And of course, we'll begin on another question. Thank you.